this is the RMS Olympic. The first ship of her class with its keel laid down in 1908 and was launched in 1911. Her maiden voyage was from Southampton to New York. Of course, this would be her in 1922, but we could go back to where she was first born. In 1907, Cunard Line launched the Lusitania and the Mauritania. White Star Line's response was to build two giant ocean liners that was never been attempted before. They need a massive shipyard to do this, located in Belfast, Ireland. In 1910, she was launched from Harlan and Wolf shipyards in Belfast, Ireland, the same place where her other two sister ships, Titanic and Britannic, would be launched. Her maiden voyage will be in June of 1911. However, months later, the Olympic was involved in a few accidents that caused her to go back for repairs, such as the collision with the HMS Hawk in September of 1911, and of course, in this photograph right here, the Olympic was taken to dry dock for throwing a propeller blade. However, this would be one of the few meetings the Olympic had with the Titanic. However, on the night of April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic would collide with an iceberg. The ship would sink 2 hours and 40 minutes into the North Atlantic Ocean on April 15, 1912, taking 1,500 souls with her during her maiden voyage. Unfortunately, the Olympic was miles away. The Cunard liner, the Carpathia, managed to rescue the survivors and take them back to New York City. In 1914, political tensions and rising conflict kicked World War I off. The RMS Olympic was requisitioned by the Admiralty to be requisitioned into a troop ship. Now, what is a troop ship, you may ask? A troop ship is a ship that carries soldiers, munitions, weapons, and supplies from battlefields to battlefields. When the United States declared war against Germany on April 6, 1917, the HT Olympic would carry Canadian and American forces to Europe. However, in, later on in 1918, the Olympic encountered U-103, who fired a torpedo at the stern, but the Olympic turned and rammed into U-103. The ship never stopped to pick up any survivors. When we all think of the RMS Olympic, most would say, oh, she is a Titanic sister ship. Well, to be honest, she is much more than a Titanic sister ship. She lived a long career from 1911 to 1935. However, after the First World War, she lived on for her passenger service, and she would later be sold and scrapped in 1935. Hey everybody, what's going on? Dustin here with another Histo Brick review. This is the new year. I'm already excited for it. 2024 is already here. Plot this, I'm recording this 2023, but who cares? So today we are reviewing the His Majesty's troop ship, the HMT Olympic, in its razzle dazzle camouflage from 1917 to 1918, as you can you can tell by the thumbnail and also the brief introduction of the video. Now, I really didn't go into depth of the full career of the Olympic. I only did the military service. Well, actually, the requisition and being used as a troop ship. And also the incident, also the most famous moment where the Olympic tracked down and rammed a sub and sank it. So talk about a Chad moment for this, this ship right here. The Olympic here with his massive guns on board. You, you can definitely tell by the amazing camouflage that you see here. It's, now there's just so much that you can do to replicate what the camouflage looks like, but you can re really try to uh, almost try to match it up perfectly. So... In regards, and anyway, so here's the bow, the breakwater right here, the anchor crane, and these two guns up on here. Now, the building was actually so complicated. In this one, the the razzle, the dazzle camouflage, actually had to be 
was actually one of the most complicated parts I had to do. So, you know, that one. anyway, so, and remember, no two sides of the ship are alike. So, what you see on this side is going to be a little bit different on the other. So, keep that in mind. So, here is the the forward well deck. You got the two guns and also the cranes as well. And hard to believe this, Hull 400 right here was the first of its class. And was the first ship before Titanic. And of course, this ship was actually intertwined with the Titanic story, but unfortunately, they never got a chance to rescue the passengers from the Titanic disaster because this ship was so similar to Titanic itself that it would have basically caused some distress among passengers, which is basically understandable. Now, if you actually do notice the funnels on here, they are printed. And also pre-assembled as well, so that way you don't go fumbling around trying to say um, which one is which, which one is which. If you pay attention to the uh, the designs on here, this one would be the first, this one would be the second, third, and fourth. Or if not, you can always just bring up a uh, at least a painting of the of the Olympic, see what it looked like, and you can go from there. The amount of camouflaging on here, you got the black and the white, the stripings. You also got some uh, light blue in there as well. And also the same for the lifeboats as well. And just all over the ship. And you gotta remember, this ship only saw itself as a troop ship. And of course, this opposite side, you got some gray as well. And just uh, many unique patterns on here is just so unreal. Is the uh, the back end of the ship, which is very similar to Titanic, but Titanic never kind of got this special treatment as well, considering it would be lost on the main voyage. And of course, there's so many blue, so many black and white. Like when I first built this thing, it was like so confusing because it was like, oh my goodness, which uh, what do I do? What do I do trying to hold these pieces in? Now you may want to pay attention if you get this model, if you pay attention to the lifeboats, they go off on different colors. Like for example, this one will be two light blues, this be gray, then black, then the grays, black gray, black double grays, and black. And this is all static right here. These lifeboats you see. Up here, near the funnels, on the aft deck, and up on the elevated section of the stern, it's static. They don't go anywhere. Double black up here, one single white, double black, then you got the white, double gray, blue, white, gray, blue. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh. Now, this does have the same anti-fouling as the Britannic, and also the same amount of boilers, so basically boilers 6 and 5 feed into funnel number 1, 4 and 3 into funnel number 2, 2 and 1 into the third funnel, and you may wonder to yourself, why, the third, why is this fourth funnel is a dummy funnel? Well, it still had a purpose, though. The fourth funnel has a purpose, you know, everyone talks about it in the movie Titanic. And you also happen to see, like, you know, paintings and pictures of Titanic and Olympic. And you just ask yourself, why is there no smoke coming out of there? Well, first of all, if you looked at the Britannic review months ago, you may find out that this is actually hooked down into the engine. And plus, as a passenger service, there is times a passenger service, it would get smoke from... Smoke and steam from the galleys down here up to the fourth funnel so it can blow out, blow out smoke and also fireplaces in the first class lounge and the smoking room is also tied to this as well. So smoke's got to go somewhere. You also have these little vents right here that draws in the fresh air while expelling the stale old air out. 
There is a video about the fourth funnel, and it's going to be from Historic Travels. I will link that up on the top corner of the screen, so that way you can check it out. And that way you can basically get the idea of what I'm saying. And I think that'd be all for the uh, Olympic review anyway, whatsoever. You know, this ship, the building is complicated, but then again... The final product is amazing. You just get this razzle-dazzle camouflage ship from a great distance. And then once you get it up closer, you can basically tell the detail. It's really amazing too, though. I can give uh, Tom from Histobrick that anyway. So. so anyway, once again, if you happen to like this video, leave a like, comment on here, subscribe for more Histobrick reviews. I try to... I'm basically going to try to do these about once a month. I know uh, February I got the Arthur M. Anderson up. So feel free to check that out. And I also I do these with a, a little bit of a historical narration. So that way you can understand the history of the ship. Like if you actually do want to learn more about the Olympic. I can link in the, the entire timeline of the RMS slash HMT Olympic from Historic Travels and also History Inside a Nutshell. We're doing a uh, Olympic month for the month of January, so subscribe to them. Check out their Discord server. I hang out there. Feel free to uh, say hi and help be part of a growing community. So anyway, once again, my name is Dustin and I will see you guys in another video.